Hey, everybody. Ooh, that was loud. Ooh. What's Ooh. up? <laughs> OK. I'm super excited to have this conversation about Filecoin Plus. So like Danny said, I'm Megan Clement from the Filecoin Foundation. And here with me, I have Galen from the Filecoin Foundation, program manager for the Filecoin Plus program. Charles Shaw, uh, founder of Phil Swan. Uh, and Deep Kapoor, who's been working on Filecoin Plus for two years now uh, at PL. Very happy to be here. Thank you. So my first question to Deep and Galen, what are your highlights from the last year? And what are you really looking forward to in the year to come? Yeah, I think a brief intro on Falcon Plus real quick for those of you that aren't as familiar with the program. I know Danny said a couple of words before he went out, and hopefully those made sense to you. But the intent is that like Falcon Plus exists as a program to solve the challenging problem of understanding who you're actually working with in a, in a completely decentralized P2P, anonymous, trustless, distributed system. It's a lot of words. Uh, but effectively enables um, people that are bringing useful and good work to the network to be rewarded for it through a decentralized governance mechanism that identifies trustworthy sources of demand and rewards them with a resource that we call data cap uh, to make deals on the network for storing things for a long time, very cheaply, and for free. Uh, the reason I mention this is because it's important for you to also understand that we use a different resource when it comes to Falcon Plus called data cap. Um, and I'll be using this term and referring to it pretty frequently for the next 15 minutes or so that you're stuck listening to us. Uh, and so thinking about this year, uh, we're currently at the start of November, reflecting where we were last November or even January. I think we've come a really long way in terms of scale. That would be probably the biggest word that comes to mind for me in terms of the changes that we've seen in the program. Specifically with DataCap itself, uh, we went from single digit pebibytes of availability of this resource in the network to hundreds, uh, specifically in terms of like multiplication factors, if I can call it that. The amount of data cap that's circulating in Filecoin has gone up about 75 times, which is insane as a construct. Uh, and alongside that, the amount of it actually being used to facilitate deal making has gone up more than 60 times. 6,000% more useful in terms of the utility that it's providing to the network and what it's enabling. And part of that comes down to changes we made in the process, um, in education, more people come into the system, tokenomics, macroeconomics, et cetera. Uh, but whatever it is, we've gone from single digit percentage proliferation on the network, I think we're like 5 to 8% maybe at the start of the year, and we're close to 97% of all active deals on the Falcon network right now have gone through or have been facilitated by, in some way or shape, data cap and the Falcon Plus program. And I'm so, sure, Deep, that's one of the reasons that you're really excited about bringing in more automation in the year to come. Yeah, absolutely. Super pumped about some of the improvements that we'll be making. Uh, before I dive into my perspective on the future, I know Galen has some thoughts on, on the past year as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that in this past year, one of the, the big things that I want to highlight that has been incredibly successful uh, is our large data set program. And specifically, we're, we're now launching kind of a, the version three of how this large data set program works. Um, and that has really unblocked a lot of interesting new sort of enterprise or different types of project partners. We're seeing storage providers helping bring you know, different clients to the table through biz dev initiatives. Uh, and really what we have now seen is we have 70% of all Filecoin Plus traffic going through this one large data set uh, program, which is phenomenal. And we have successfully gotten some tooling that increases the speed and automation with new kind of security risk preventative measures. Uh, and we're now automating how that notary gets topped up, which we think is really exciting for how we can push the program into the future. Um, back to Deep for some of how that's going to work. Yeah, so Megan, as you were flagging before, I think um, one of the things we're really interested in is facilitating the success of the demand side of the marketplace. 
in Filecoin, and the way we do that is by providing data cap, making sure it's abundant and available and gets out there to the right people as fast as possible. And so we've been investing a lot this year in understanding uh, how to build a trustworthy process and a trustable mechanism uh, so that we can move forward and move a lot quicker. Uh, one of the top line metrics we spend a lot of time thinking about is time to data cap. Uh, and one of the things we're, I think I'm very, very interested in is seeing how we can automate getting data cap out there as quickly as possible. And you'll hear us talk a little bit more about notaries, but sort of evolving that role from becoming more of a guardian of the network and ensuring that we're identifying the right people to support, but really getting data cap out there as fast as possible. There's a lot of faces in this room as well that have been working specifically towards that problem. So shout out to all of you for the awesome work that you've been doing. Really excited to continue finding ways in which we can mechanize these things and make them move a lot quicker. Great. And on the note of notaries, I'd love to hear from Charles. Um, you, you have been a notary. Uh, you are a notary because uh, you have a vested interest in the long-term success of the Filecoin project. Um, and I'd love to hear a little bit more about why you decided to become a notary and what your top priorities are for the next six months. Yeah, so basically like uh, First one has been working with the Firecoin ecosystem since the very beginning, even before the space race, before Mainland launch. So when the day Mainland launched, we think that the big success of the Firecoin will be the real usage. And uh, where data comes, where the client comes, will be a key to the success. So when Notary program started, so we see that it's a good opportunity to serve the community. So in, uh, we, have, we have been elected uh, as a notary for about one and a half a year. We see like uh, there were a lot of challenges, opportunities, and uh, also good user cases from community we can serve. Some examples come from the community, like uh, we see lots of programs using IPFS. We want to store data on Firecoin network. In early stages, those data, the, the Firecoin, uh, that was a stage, gas phase really high. So with uh, FirePlus deals, like we can compensate the users, the storage providers, cover those data costs. And uh, then later on, we see like uh, there are lots of cases people need to get used to how to use those data, how to onboard into the Firecoin ecosystem. And also there are lots of uh, cases and uh, users need support. So not just as a tools, but also about the process. What we learned from the community is that uh, there was, uh, because Firecoin is a global network, there were lots of countries, regions, people speak different uh, languages. On different regions, there was uh, different uh, regulations. So translation, talking to the community, help them onboarding, and uh, something like uh, they need to arrive list. For example, what kind of data is um, suitable for onboarding on Firecoin network? And what kind of data is not suitable? So those are the typical work we have performed as a notary. So some people think everything, the, as long as it's the data, is good for data cap or Fire Plus project, not real. Like we need to explain them case by case. One good example is about uh, Sonona blockchain recently trying to onboard their data on Firecoin, which is a real useful user cases, but some people from community don't understand why every node already have the blockchain data, why they need to back up a Firecoin node. Mm -hmm. Because they don't realize like a snapshot is not enough. They need to back up the full node, which is where several terabytes, and it probably become a petabyte in the future, and that's a very useful data for the entire Web3 community. Totally. Uh, speaking of notaries, I know that we are coming up on our fourth ever round of notary elections, and I would love to hear from you guys, from all three of you, but especially from Deep and Galen, what, ca what characteristics you think really make an excellent notary, and what should somebody do if they want to become elected as a notary in this next cycle? Yeah, thank you. Um, we are stoked to continue bringing in you know, new partners that want to uh, continue working with us as ongoing notaries, or maybe they've been connected with Filecoin uh, in some way in the past, and they want to learn more about the Filecoin Plus project by becoming a notary. Um, or maybe this is the, totally brand new to this entire ecosystem, and they just want to see where they can kind of fit in. And as far as like who are some of the interesting people that we, we want to partner with, um, 
as Charles said, you know, we, we need international subject matter experts that can help us understand when a client or a data owner comes and says, I have this type of data, it's you know, maybe medical health data, and it's on this scale, it's really helpful to have an expert who can say, yes, if, if you're telling me that your data set covers this type of information, the amount that you're requesting is accurate, and in this geopolitical region, that would or would not fall under certain regulations. And so as we can find those subject matter experts that want to help us unblock some of those new uh, kind of client avenues, but then another group that we really want to work with are different developers that want to try and think about how can we push other tooling and automation for this notary process? How can we build some different software solutions or some different smart contract solutions uh, that remove out some of the, the manual subject matter expertise that's required and instead can say, what is a safe enough barrier uh, to work with a person and get them onboarded onto Filecoin quickly um, through you know, DataCap as this subsidy model. Um, but then if, if this is anyone in this room or listening to this recording or if you, you know, know someone sitting next to you, uh, definitely have them find us on Slack. We're on the public Filecoin Slack. Uh, we have ongoing notary governance calls and you will see in our various GitHub repos, links to the different applications, uh, different kind of projects that we're working on, but that's where you will also find that notary application process, and those, those dates are coming up in the next few months, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, and add. I think the only thing I'd add to that is, going back to my first answer to your question, is scale. I also just want to see more. I think uh, Falcon as a network in terms of how it's being utilized has just multiplied so much since the last time we did notary elections that the program itself also needs to scale to support that throughput, to support the people coming in through the door, ensure that clients are being successful, and we're identifying and supporting the right subgroups within the ecosystem. And so I'd love to see more. Um, Charles, I don't yeah. know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we need a more telecab onboarding, we need more notaries, and uh, as uh, one of the most experienced notary in the community, I would like to help onboarding new notaries and uh, give them guidance, passing my experience and knowledge to them to help them faster adapt to the role and uh, onboarding more. Awesome. One of the things I know I am super excited about in the upcoming year of Filecoin Plus is this focus on working groups, kind of to Galen's point uh, about some of the things that are wonderful about notaries, uh, being able to find subject matter experts. Um, I love the idea that we're going to be pulling in people who are, have specific expertise uh, to create these working groups to do governance. And I would love to hear more from you guys about this focus on working groups in the next year. Yeah, thank you. Um, as we have grown this program, we have identified, you know, we already knew we had complicated sets of stakeholders that have sometimes similar and sometimes competing interests, right? And we need to design both processes and programs that serve all these different stakeholders. And the more that, you know, the few of us in the governance roles can kind of get out of the way and get the right stakeholders in the room to brainstorm those decisions and lead that charge, the faster we can iterate and meet those adapting market needs for what the program is seeing. And so what we're really trying to do is still have a very strong governance team that will help facilitate these different working groups and run some cross-functional sprints. But then if we can have some more structure around what those stakeholder working groups are, we can really pull in a lot more ecosystem partners, plug them in in a really targeted and concrete way where they are having the most leverage impact uh, on something that they are uniquely qualified to help us unblock and solve. And then we can have those different working groups kind of share out and as they start to say, oh, this you know, storage provider working group is seeing this need and we're seeing this problem, um, we really need to pull back into the notary working group to understand how you know, the notaries can help us unblock this current biz dev need that the storage providers are facing. Um, so as we kind of stand up these working groups, again, I've already mentioned it, but find us in Slack. Uh, you will find different channels for all those different working groups. You can learn more about them, and they will have ongoing meetings as we kind of build out a better system of, of how they report out and what their public roadmaps are so that if we can get the work that they're doing in front of the community, then you can also see, oh, this coming down the pipe in the next six months is going to be really impactful for 
this project I'm working on, I want to go join this working group and understand more about how can I be engaged in this. So please join. So I know you just answered this, but I'm going to ask it again just so we get the opportunity to repeat it. Um, if you want to get engaged with the Filecoin Plus program, you can join, to, you can join the upcoming notary election, become a notary, you can join a governance call, uh, you can come find any of these lovely humans on Slack, any other key ways that you can I think cost that, them after yeah, the only you thing I'd add to that is GitHub, actually. And GitHub. Yeah, so a lot of our stuff is in public GitHub interfaces. You can see the past of the entirety of the program documented, see how we've made changes, look at the different checkpoints that we've been through. Uh, so learn a little bit about our past, but really come participate in shaping the future. Uh, that's also happening there, and so we'd love to see you. Beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm so excited for everything that Filecoin Plus has in store for this next year and beyond. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.